one who has been transformed yes. by the power of the resurrected one. And she has the courage today to tell you about that resurrection power. Would you welcome and encourage Tina? Yes. Yes. Have you ever been angry with God? Ever felt abandoned or forsaken? Well, I've feasted on that sour fruit before. Believe the lie that Satan would have me believe that God had forgotten about me. You see, here's the deal. My parents molested me from the, on, a day, on a weekly basis from the time that I was four years old until I was an adult. And this was done under the cloak of a false religion they practiced. For years, I prayed to this false God to save me. When we would go out to the store, I would lag behind, hoping that someone, anyone, would, would, would kidnap me. For in my early years, I would sit at the, and watch the door, just waiting for somebody, anybody, to burst through the door and save me. Yes. Well, no one ever came. And finally, as a young teenager, I figured out no one was coming to save me, except to me to save myself. Mm. And so began my addiction to the drug of self-reliance. Mm. I made a plan, counted off the number of times I had to be violated, put my head down, and ate of the spoiled meat weekly for the next couple hundred weeks till I was legally grown, then I took off right. I took off with one resolution, never rely on anybody except myself. <clears throat> Many times over those years, I felt God's tugging on my heart showing up in my thoughts and in my dreams, speaking to my inner conscience. But I was so angry and so opposed to religion and, and to God that I kept running away from him, pushing him away from me, continuing to feed on this drug of self-reliance and work. Almost like a fanatic, I set out single-mindedly to reach my goals. Distracted by nothing or no one, I worked better, longer, harder than everybody else. I did more than I was paid for. I saved almost all my money. I got myself into psychotherapy, got myself into school. And before I realized it, I looked up and I was successful. I had reached all of my goals that I had set for myself. But I was, something was very wrong. Mm. Mm. There was this hole inside yeah, that yeah, begged yeah. filling. Mm. Yeah. And then it happened. God, Jesus chased me down. He yes. tackled yes. me, wrapped his arms yes. and his legs yes. around me, yes. and would not let me go until I got it. Yes. Hey, I want you to, I want you to picture in your mind a, a toddler having a temper tantrum, arms flailing, yes. and a loving parent coming and sitting down in front of him, and oh, just yes. moving in close yes. to him and holding yes. him. Yes until he's able to calm down enough to hear his yes. parents' voice and to feel their love. Yes. Well, that's exactly what Jesus did for me. Yes. He held me and wouldn't let me go until I calmed down enough to hear him and that I could get it. I could really get it. Yes. I got it. He had never left me. That was just a lie Satan had been telling me. It was a lie I had been telling myself. That's right. You know, he had been there all along, walking with me, carrying me even at times. Throughout my childhood, he was there choosing me, favoring me above all others. Unlike many of my siblings, I got to walk away with no babies. I got to walk away with life skills, tools for helping me to survive. Like my siblings, I had addictions. But he guided my addictions away from the really destructive things and toward the less destructive things like addiction to work and addiction to goals and sugar. <laughs> <laughs> All of these years, I thought I was so great. I thought I was hot doo. -doo. <laughs> but then I realized that it wasn't me being great at all. It was him Hallelujah. being great That's and right. me. Yes. Okay? How, look, how could it possibly have been me? This was the Holy Spirit guiding me to the right mental health specialist, ordering my steps, leading me to the right people, opening doors, preparing hearts to receive me, yes. going ahead of me, manipulating the resources of the universe to favor me. So, you know, looking back on those events, I realized that I connect with some pretty significant biblical people. Firstly, with Joseph, son of Jacob, 
whose life really foreshadowed the cross. He experienced persecution and suffering, but in the gained, but in the end, gained the crown of righteousness. But secondly, and most importantly, I connect with Jesus, the Christ, who experienced persecution for three years and endured great suffering on Friday in order to gain the crown of righteousness on Easter Sunday morning. Yes. Similarly, I experienced persecution and endured great suffering. I spent many years stuck in the darkness of Friday, devoid of hope. Yes. But on Sunday morning, <laughs> on Sunday morning, the light chased away the darkness and brought with it the crown of righteousness, which I now don proudly. I, I got to be cleansed and made new. I got to defy every textbook yeah. that would dare to define who I was supposed to be because yeah. of my life experience. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I got to heal in ways that baffled the experts. And yes. guess what? That same balm, that same healing balm of Gilead that was available to Joseph and available to me, it's available to yes. anyone yes. who plants their faith and hope yes. in the mighty and powerful. Listen, if you are stuck in Friday, just hold on. Yes. Remember the victory and yes. the resurrection, that crown of glory that yes. awaits you on Sunday yes. morning. Yes. I want to leave you with a quote from Poet Laureate, Brother James Baldwin, who says, Your crown has already been bought and paid for. All you have to do is wear it. Yes. Yes.